Hello traders, today is going to be a very fun video where we're going to be talking about the five major mistakes that you are probably making and I'm also going to show the very popular Korean streamer Sado who is making these mistakes as well. So the goal of this video as you watch is identify where you are going wrong because all five of what I'm going to tell you today are all things that are very minus EV, meaning that they are expected to lose you money in the long run. If you catch yourself doing any of these, be careful. Uh, definitely try to avoid doing any of these five things. Let's begin. Over leveraging. This has so many problems. So what do I define as over leveraging? That's a tough definition, but I would say anything over 10 times leverage is a lot of leverage. Uh, this limits your opportunities massively. Here's why. Guys, let's say you're on 100x leverage and your liquidation price is 0.5% away. If that's the case, if price just goes up, let's say 0.3% against your short position, you're kind of scared about getting liquidated, meaning that you might have to close immediately. The problem with that is that markets naturally fluctuate. They do not just move in one direction. So by being so over leveraged and scared of being liquidated, all you're doing is just limiting your, your opportunities to actually make money or to make a solid trade. Additionally, it goes without being said, using very high leverage means you're a lot more likely to lose everything or lose a lot of money. Overall, this is very, very minus CV. Let's go into a trade. This is streamer Sato. This is a screenshot that I took of his live stream. Let's go look at a few things that he's doing right here. So the first thing that I really want you to look at is the bottom of my screen and what you're looking at right there. Uh, do you see where it says he entered at 45138 and his liquidation price is 45366? That is a lot of leverage. That means that he is using about 100 times leverage. Um, this allows really no wiggle room. What ended up happening? Well, you can see in the far right, he has 2 million Korean won in his account. Now he has 47,000. It's kind of hard to see, but if you look on the far right, uh, you know, he had 47,000 there. He got liquidated. Uh, a full on liquidation because look what happened to price. He shorted here at 23.20 UTC plus nine. And then here, 23.30, he was liquidated. Just like that. Just on one market move. And guess what happened? The market actually continued to move. It moved up, it moved down. But the issue with this mistake, guys, is by over leveraging, you're just limiting all of what you can do and risking yourself for large loss, which in his case, he lost 1.6 grand in a matter of minutes. Second issue. Using your gut intuition is a problem. You need to be trading with a strategy, a system, or a defined edge. The issue with using your gut intuition, guys, is that everyone is trying to do that. Everyone thinks that they're Nostradamus or Warren Buffett. And it's this Dunning-Kruger effect that can get you into very, very bad trades. But there's a side effect of this that people don't really talk about, and I want to let you know it. The issue of gut intuition is it can't be separated by your own emotions and by your ego. Here's the issue. Let's say that the market goes against you and you have this gut feeling the market's gonna go up. Because you have that gut feeling, people don't tend to think that they are wrong even when the market proves them otherwise. Uh, so that can be very, very costly because if the market continues to move against your position, you could lose everything. You could have a substantial loss just because you're using your gut intuition of, I know the market's gonna go up. Trading without a system and trading without any kind of defined strategy and just saying, I think market go up, it is just basically guaranteed to make you lose all of your money one day or another, just to let you know. So here's a really good example of the coin Starl. Now on Starl, uh, Sato and his two buddies, you can see what they did right here. They, they longed about $89,000 worth of this coin that was very, very volatile. Uh, you can see the liquidation price is incredibly close to the entry price. But why did he do this? Well, he longed it because I want you to look at this chart right here. He thought from his gut intuition that the price would just keep going higher. If you're looking at this chart right here, you probably think to yourself, yeah, I mean, this my gut intuition uh, or a lot of people's gut intuition might just be, guess what, man? The market's rising. It's probably just going to keep rising higher and higher. Like, tell me why it wouldn't. Watch this. Liquidated. Uh, yeah, he got liquidated again. Uh, you can see that his KRW, his Korean won, went from 7.1 million uh, down to 34,000. So he had a substantial loss of about uh, $5,400,000. And the reason for this loss was, again, just gut intuition. He thought because the market was rising, it has to keep rising. Guess what? 
It did not. And that is just not how markets work, and he lost all his money there. Okay, another example that is similar, but I want to tell you guys as well, uh, is letting the market decide where you're going to exit. Hear me out, because that might be a bit of a strange title. Cryptocurrencies naturally have a lot of volatility. As you can see, they move a lot. They move up, they move down, they move sideways, they do nothing, they do a lot. Everything can happen and, and anything will happen, okay? Just because price falls and you're long, that does not mean you have to exit as long as you're not likely to be liquidated. I don't mean bag holding or just holding on to a loss forever. What I'm saying is that if you take a trade, a system trade or a high EV good strategy trade and price just begins to go against you, that doesn't mean you have to freak out. Just because price sells down and wicks a little bit, that does not mean that you should just exit. A lot of the times, actually, guys, that's the worst possible time to exit. The better thing to do will be to just not move your stop loss, let the trade play out. Maybe price recovers and actually hits your take profit and goes higher. Or maybe it, go, it keeps going lower and just hits your stop loss. But the worst thing that you can do is to let the market decide where you're going to get out. Okay? So an example of that would be this. So we can see here that... Uh, Sato somehow entered at the very worst possible price with 400,000 people, which is the name of the coin, not <laughs> people. Uh, he entered at 2818, uh, 2819 as you can see on the chart, whatever you want to call it. He exited right here on this frame. Um, and I'm going to show you guys kind of more about this. That's really cool. The market went against him. You can clearly see that the market did go against him, but it actually turned out that this was legit just a retracement. And you're going to be pretty shocked to see what, what actually happened to people what actually happened to, to this market. So what was the problem? What was the mistake that he made here? Well, here's what he did. The green arrow the green arrow is where he bought and the red arrow is just where he sold. Super simple. That looks like he sold it at a local market bottom, but it's not that bad. Guys, look at this. Now, how do you feel about his decision? Had he just bought and had he just held and does not have that much over leverage, you know, had uh, a smaller position, he could have doubled whatever amount of money he put in because he bought in at 28 guys this thing doubled from 28 okay and it actually almost exactly doubled at the current price in the far right and this is so fascinating to see that the mistake made here was just he let the market decide his exit he said the price has gone against me and i'm going to close out at a large loss so he closed out a large loss and lost what is that like 1.2 grand in unrealized profit and loss However, had he just said, okay, I'm not going to let the market decide my exit. Let's just reduce my leverage. Let's put my stop loss far away, and I'm just going to walk away. Had he done that, he would have doubled, doubled his money. Had he traded spot instead of futures, he would have easily doubled his money. Okay? I mean, not easily, but he could have doubled his money in a few days. Just saying. Another issue, dopamine trades. This is when you take a lot of small constant profits because you do not want to close out a losing trade. Uh, this is very common. I've done it. You have definitely done it. We've all done it. Um, it's very minus TV. And think about it this way. If there's a guy that has a 95% chance of making a 1% profit, so 95% of the time he makes 1%, um, but 5% of the time he loses 100%. The expected value of that is is pretty pretty bad. So. I can actually tell you the exact ca calculation of that. If 95% of the time he makes 1%, his expected gain is 0.95 in percentage terms. Now, 0.95 minus he loses 100% 5% uh, of the time, which is such a large number. If he, lose, if he loses 100% 5% of the time, that's minus 5. His expected value is minus 4.05% just because he's taking ex uh, dopamine trades. What dopamine trades are, are taking those constant small profits, but then you never take a loss, and this is what happens when you lose 100% of your account. Um, you know, Let's say it's 5% of the time, it could be more. Very, very bad strategy, but it's very good to actually take the opposite trade of a guy who's doing this, who's taking these small little profits, and then every once in a while, every once in a while, they have such a large loss that it clears them out of the game, but makes you a lot of money. And that's the opposite of a dopamine trade. Here are a few. So I tracked all of his trades for this video just to show you guys. Do you guys see the sequence of gains versus the, the one big loss he had? Let me just show 
what happened here. He had a lot of small gains from anywhere from like 0.5 to maybe 1.39%. Then he had an 11% loss. And for that day, Price, actually the majority of the time, he, he made money. But these are dopamine trades. These are small profits that don't mean much because you lose it all. So this is really something you should be avoiding. That's why a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio with a stop loss to take profit can just be such a better system because then you don't end up like that, okay? Not changing your mind is the fifth and final mistake I wanna talk about. This is similar to gut intuition, but what I'm gonna be talking about here is trade to trade, meaning you just closed a losing trade or you just closed a winning trade and you're deciding for your next position on an altcoin. Shorting then being stopped out in an uptrend, repeating this again and again because you think that the trend is destined to go lower. Not changing your mind, not being flexible is going to lose you a lot of money. This stubbornness tends to lead to very, very large losses because as with the other issues, this problem means that you're just going to keep doing the, the incorrect thing, the side of the trade that is the losing trade. Now, what do the best traders do? Well, the best traders have flexible minds. They are able to change their mind in a trade even, or after they've closed out a winner or a loser. Now, these best traders, quote unquote, whether it's hedge fund, retail, investors, whoever you want, they are going to rely on solid market data that they trust and high expected value strategies rather than just trying to be right. Okay? So, yeah, this is really stubbornness to a T, guys. Uh, this is Sato's trades on December 28th to December 29th. Every single trade was long. Not once did he try to go short, uh, and the market actually did move lower. You can see his losses for that day were massive. Um, guys, by the way, the percentage is not how much he lost. The percentage is the price movement against him. In all of these examples, he basically lost everything. But what I was showing here is the price move, whether it's in his favor or against him. So just that's what you need to know when you're looking at this percentages, okay? Liquidated means he lost everything, then he added more, then he lost even more money after that. But every single trade he took was long. This is what Bitcoin had done. Uh, the beginning of that red arrow is where he started trading, and then the end of the red arrow is where he stopped, right around 42, 200 when, when price dipped. Now, as you can see, price was down. It fell about $1,000, and as price fell $1,000, he decided to take every single trade repeated over and over again, trying to get into longs when the market was telling him that the market was, that it was going to go lower and he just wasn't you know listening and the market did end up going lower this is stubbornness and not changing your mind you need to be flexible and if the data starts to tell you that you know price might be going down and you're in a long position then flipping your positions probably not a terrible idea now on this point of expected value and best traders i want to cover a quick example of that um, let's go that over that right here so I'm going to give you an example, and let me just show you how if you use any of those five mistakes, you would lose everything on this. But if you are a smart guy, a smart trader, then this would work very, very well for you. What is expected value? It is the probability of you making money times the payout minus the probability of you losing money times the loss amount. So very, very, very super simple example. You're flipping a coin that's biased, has a 55% chance of heads, 45% chance of tails. Um, you're going to either make a hundred bucks or lose a hundred bucks. You can bet on heads or tails. It doesn't matter. Now, in this example, you should only be betting on heads because 55% chance of it being heads and 45% chance of it being tails, you need to always bet heads. The expected value of this is $10 per bet. And I got that by multiplying the probabilities times the payout, as you can see right there. Now, what this means is that if you were to flip this coin 1,000 times, you would, on average, be up about, you know, betting at 100 bucks a uh, thousand times, you would, on average, be up about $10,000 in profit uh, over that series of time. However, here's where things get very, very interesting. This is pretty cool. However, what if you did this example, but you were over leveraged and you have a bankroll of $100 and you put all of your money onto this trade? Guys, there's a 45% chance that you would lose everything. Because if you do this first mistake right here of just over leveraging, if you bet 100 bucks and you have a 55% chance of success, you're probably going to make money. You're probably going to double up to 200. But what if you double up to 200, then you bet 200 bucks, you know? The issue with over leveraging, with betting everything, is that even if you have an edge, it doesn't matter because you're going to lose everything. 
And that's why expected value is so important. Another one, what if you're very stubborn and you think that, you know, flipping a coin uh, and you see five tails, that this system must be broken, that there's actually not a 55% chance of heads, even though I just told you that there was. And then you start betting on tails. And then you start losing by betting on tails because it has a 45% chance. That is stubbornness. And that is not changing your mind. Okay? What if instead you do dopamine trades or the martingale strategy? where you take a few of these trades and when you lose one or two, you begin to just go crazy and bet very, very large. And when you do bet very, very large, let's say you take a few crippling losses and then you lost everything. These are dopamine trades. You're making these small profits at tiny amounts, but then when you lose a few, you go crazy and you bet the whole farm. That's dopamine trades, an issue. And using your gut intuition. Yeah, I don't think I can apply that to, to this. But I think that this really is a beautiful example of a winning system that a lot of people just by their own bias would fail. What is the correct thing to do here? Well, the correct thing to do would be to bet the Kelly amount, which is something completely different. I don't want to talk about it today. But a solid strategy for this, if you could do this infinite times, if you had an infinite amount of rounds or let's say 1 million rounds, betting, I would say $1 every single time meaning that you're either going to make a buck or lose a buck. You have a 55% chance of making a dollar and a 45% chance of losing a dollar, let's say with a bankroll of $100. Um, the chance of you losing everything is possible, but not as likely. The odds are you're going to make a lot, a, lot, a lot of money rather than you trying to bet, like, let's say, $80 on your first bet would be idiotic because there's a 45% chance you lose $80. Why would you want to do that? You know, you need to bet small to really capture that edge. So guys, I hope that this was helpful with the five mistakes that traders tend to make. Uh, traders being Sato, who's a great example of really always what not to do. I hope that these five can really give you a clear idea for where you're at. If you're not making any of these five mistakes, then, I mean, you're on another level um, or you're just not betting enough. If, you, if you're not making any of these five mistakes, I, I don't know how that's even possible, but uh, then you're just a machine and you're killing it. But these are things that you need to look out for. And I would say the most important one is probably over leveraging is the worst thing to do. Um, the other four are terrible to do as well, but over leveraging your account and betting too much is of course the number one um, fastest way to lose all of your money within seconds. So not a good idea. So I hope that this has been a really cool and helpful example of the five market mistakes that almost everyone makes. And now that you know them, you can try your absolute best to question your own psychology when you feel like doing something like this. Happy trading. Don't be sado. Go make some money.